The Toronto Raptors has one of the best logos in the NBA, hands down. It's their retro logo, but they still wear it on their jerseys every now and then, so it still counts. Even though we're not doing so hot this year, I still want to show my support and appreciation to the team. And as a fan, there's nothing more that I want than to have this logo up on my wall. But we're not just going to put that logo up. We're going to make something bigger and better. Check it out. So apart from what you just saw being cut on the CNC, most of the other parts were cut from MDF. MDF is super easy to sand, which is why it's a great choice for a project like this. I use a variety of thicknesses from half inch, quarter inch, eighth inch, just to give it a lot of depth right away. Those are pretty straightforward, just cutting pieces out of wood. The one thing that I think is a little bit more interesting is the Raptor skin, which I think is probably one of the cooler parts of the build. I really truly love seeing that VBED go to work. That thing does some magic, if you know what I mean. So with everything being cut, we can finally start with the finish prep. Starting with, of course, sanding. There's very minimal sanding needed because the pieces cut very well. I also went ahead and gave a bevel to some of the pieces and a round over to the others, just to kind of have a little bit of variance there. And speaking of variance, I also went ahead and got the Dremel out to shape the claws and the teeth to a more organic shape, just to have a little bit more contrast as well. That process definitely took quite some time, but if we're gonna make this bigger and better, we can't skip any of those because that's what's gonna take this from a good project to something great. And after that, we can start painting. I started off with the background pieces, which were the bigger ones, and they were painted black. The rest of the detail pieces got two coats of primer, to make sure that those colors that we're going to put on in a little bit are really going to pop. And of course, if you've done any type of surface finishing or painting, you know there's always going to be some fuzzies or some grain raising going on. So sanding in between coats is also very important. A quick hit with some 220 grit sandpaper gets that job done quickly. And after that, we can finally lay some color.
Surface finishing slash painting is probably one of my favorite parts of any project. I get so much satisfaction seeing it go well. But we're not stopping there. We're gonna airbrush the grooves with a darker shade of red to make that wrapper skin a little bit more distinct and make it pop out a little bit more. While I was at it, I also went ahead and hand painted all the smaller pieces because they were just too finicky to spray. I also went ahead and painted something white, a different shade of white, which I don't think you really needed to see. So that's it for painting. We can now move on to a different part of the build, which is gonna be the basketball. I really want this basketball to have a more realistic look and after a few failed attempts, I ended up wrapping the basketball parts in a perforated vinyl that I spray painted gray to match the color from the original logo. Wrapping these with vinyl was so, so easy, especially with the help of a heat gun. So if you're doing any type of wrapping anytime soon, make sure to pick up a heat gun and I'm sure you'll thank me later. Moving on to the final integral part of the build before we can start assembly, and that is the marquee letters. Ever since I saw Jimmy Duresta make those marquee letters, I was hooked. They do take quite some time and some patience to build, but they're really not that hard at all. Uh, there are a couple key things that you need to keep in mind when making them, but after that it's nice and easy. I got some galvanized flashing that I'm going to use to wrap around the letters, and the one thing you need to make sure is that you're bending these at a perfect 90 just to make sure that everything's gonna be flat. I used some small 18 gauge nails to nail these in and I think doing them by hand looks the best. Time consuming but I really do think they come out better at the end. I use a variety of punches to get into those hard to reach areas and with some patience they do eventually go in. After that I can finish it by leaving some overlap where I can drill a small hole to pop in a small rivet Another thing you want to keep in mind is that if you have letters that has holes in them, is to work from the inside out. This will make it easier for you to drill the holes and also pop in the rivet. I repeated the same process for the outside, which took just as long, if not longer, but it was definitely much easier. You can see it clearer here that if you were to start on the outside, it would be a lot harder to get a rivet on that inside part. And like I said, doing these things properly really pays off in the end. These things look great. We can now start with the assembly. Starting with the marquee letters that we just made, I'm going to be attaching them to the back pieces. And I made the file in a way where I can just line up the holes from the back and pop in a couple screws and it should all line up in the end. I got some outdoor string lights that I'm going to use and with the help of a block, I can hot glue these flush to the front of the letters. I tried my best to keep the wiring as neat as possible, but in reality, I was really more worried about having everything lay flat, which is why you see me using a lot of these wire clips. And this is where things kind of get a little bit hectic and messy. I had to cut a couple extra pieces to beef up some of the overhanging pieces, which also created some pockets for me where I can hide some of the bigger wiring components. I also cut some segments that will act as spacers, which will help me enclose all the wiring later and make everything look neat. But before I can move on and finish the wiring, I wanted to flip it over and make sure that things are still going to fit properly. Before I could add the Raptor silhouette, I had to sandwich the purple acrylic. Purple acrylic is a little harder to find and a little bit more pricey, so what I ended up doing was printing a purple circle on some clear laminate that I could mount on some clear acrylic, which I can then cut on the CNC. It's a little bit more work, but doing it this way allowed me to pick the correct purple color. The acrylic rests nicely in the pocket and it gets sandwiched with a Raptor silhouette, which I glued in using some black construction adhesive. I went ahead and popped in a couple screws from the back to make sure that this thing isn't going anywhere. I've decided to adhere the outer purple parts just to triple check that everything is lining up. I mean, we've come this far, right? And the last thing I would want is for this thing to be slightly misaligned. 
I gave that ample time to dry and I can confidently say that everything is in the right place. And with that in mind, I can flip it over and continue the rest of the wiring. I attached the finer segments that are going to be holding the LEDs and this is where I found out that the 12 volt adapter and the power strip weren't going to fit. But it's not a big deal, I just had to make a little bit of a mess. With all of that sorted, I can finally start adding the LEDs. I wanted them all the way around the outside to give it a nice outer glow, as well as on the inside ring where they can peek through the purple acrylic. I hot glued the 12 volt adapter as well as the power strip, and with a little bit of wire organizing, we can call the wiring complete. The final thing that I added before enclosing the whole thing with the back covers are some blocks where I can attach the French cleat making sure that everything lines up and we can call it complete. That's as clean as I can get it, but luckily we are going to put some back covers on this. I cut those out from 8 inch MDF and made sure to add some vent holes to keep the air flowing in there. After popping in some screws, it's looking... professional? <laughs> We are so close to finishing this and the next thing we're going to do is to finally put all those little tiny pieces that we painted so carefully together. I started off by mocking them into place, making sure that all the spacing is correct and glued them piece by piece as carefully as I can. I use the same black adhesive which won't stand out if you're worried to squeeze out. I used some weights to hold down the bigger pieces and the smaller ones were just held down in place for a couple of seconds. We can definitely call it done at this point, but that's not why we're making this video. We're trying to make the best sign ever. So to kind of bring everything together, I decided to wrap the whole thing with some more galvanized flashing. Using the same techniques that we use with the letters, but this time in a bigger scale. I must have hammered hundreds of nails to this thing. And to finish it, I bent the flashing inwards and popped in the rivets. The flashing leaves quite a sharp edge and to remedy that I got this Carter edge trim to cover it up. I think this gives it a much more finished look with the added benefit of not getting hurt. I wanted to add the same trim to the back and while I was at it I applied some sealer where the galvanized flashing met the wood just so that none of the purple light can peek through where I don't want it to. I screwed in the French cleat and flipped it back over to add the final part of the project, the cherry on top, the bulbs. I got these beautiful Edison light bulbs and before screwing them in I added some of these grommets which really made the whole thing look so much more elegant. It's all in the details as they say and details is what we got.
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I thoroughly enjoyed this whole project from beginning to end. And I'm definitely going to make more signs in the future. Definitely another Raptor sign, probably one of their more modern logos. And if you have any suggestions, definitely let me know. I am so pumped to make more of these. If you enjoyed the video and you've made it this far, consider subscribing. I really think you're going to enjoy what I have in stock for you in the near future. Again, thank you so much for all your support. And I'll see you guys on the next video.